Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Buckeye Edition. Today, we are going to be talking about our OSU football Buckeyes and talking about, you already know, the landscape of college football. It's changing every week, so it seems things are happening that me and the captain, Byron, did not foresee, but we are here for it. Uh, as we just said, I got the captain, Byron Mitchell. How are you doing today, sir? We are doing good today. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm feeling good on our um, weekly Buckeye college football reviews because you and I know me and you have been hyping two weeks specifically all season. It was week mm-hmm. six, which was this past Saturday, and then the week of October 30th. And week six made us look like the smartest people in the world because we said this week was going to change a lot in college football and it, it changed things have it was a week man it was tight games comebacks all over college, it, college football really delivered this weekend but Byron, man let's get let's get right into the Buckeyes man we had another impressive win against Maryland 66 to 17 and again I'm just going to start these again the same way we told y'all to relax about C.J. Stroud. I'm going to say it every week. We told you guys to relax. We did. We tried to tell you. I was a 19-year-old true freshman. He'll grow into this thing. And he has. I, I just want to know the people who are like, bench him. And now they're like, oh, my gosh, he should win the highs. And I'm like, oh, don't be fickle, OSU fans. Keep the energy. Keep the same energy. But by man. Talk about what you like, C.J. Stroud, the whole game. Let's just get right into it. Overall, uh, another excellent performance uh, by the offense and defense. Uh, C.J. Stroud went 24 for 33 for 406 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another stellar performance for him like he had last week as well. Um, Trevion Henderson, 16 carries, 102 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Master Teague had four carries for 31 yards and a touchdown. Our receiving core looked good. Olave, seven receptions, 120 yards, two touchdowns. And Smith and Jigba had five for 103, no touchdowns. And Garrett Wilson, five receptions, 84 yards, two touchdowns. Our offense is rolling. Defense looked good. We had two interceptions, a um, number of sacks. So we're looking good all around, all across the board. Was there anything in the game that you didn't like? Um, no. I think we, like I said, I think we we're rolling on all cylinders. Um, there's nothing I really didn't say. Oh, that we could have done better. Okay. Hey, that's that's good. When the captain says there's nothing he didn't like, man, that that is real good stuff. But I mean, if you just look at these quarter breakdowns, fourteen in the first, twenty-one in the second, and third. 10 in the fourth for 66 points. Like CJ Stroud didn't even play the whole game. And he had the five touchdowns at 406. Like, yeah. That's to me. When you're good, you're good. And then Chris Olave, man, still climbing up the wide receiver record books. He really might get a chance to uh, break the OSU receive, like be the record holder for most receiving touchdowns at OSU. I really hope he does. He's been stellar the last couple of seasons. Like, and just total yards, Maryland had 335. We had 598. First downs, we had 29. They had 22. Like, Baby Tua, Tonga Vailoa had two picks, two touchdowns. The run game, they didn't get anything going. But our run game, man, Javion Henderson, 16-102. T got in there as well. T got a touchdown. So I always like seeing Master T get his in. Shoot, even Kyle McCord got to throw some passes. Jack Miller got to throw a couple passes. Like Chris Olave, the three headed monster we have with Jackson, Chris, and Garrett is just wild. Really is. Like, I think we really have like the best wide receiving core in all of college. Oh, yeah. It's not even close. And Maryland falls to four and two, uh, one and two in the conference. We go to five and one, three and zero oh in the Big Ten conference. We're actually off this week, which is cool. But we'll even we'll preview right now the Indiana game that we have coming up. And Byron, they um, as you know, we're at Indiana on the twenty third. 
And it was just a couple of days ago, they made that the ABC night game. That, that, that I, as a Buckeye fan, if you've been a Buckeye fan for this long, you know, sometimes that causes you some concern. Yeah, night games before a big game, a.k.a. Penn State. Um, usually trap games for Ohio State. So hopefully this one isn't, or that's going to change a lot for Ohio State in regards to the college football rank playoffs. 7.30 on ABC, on the road, probably their last national televised game they're going to get. We've seen this recipe so many times, and we just saw this recipe this Saturday with a game we did not ex- – well, we talked about at the beginning that it would be one versus five, and then it became one versus unranked. And Alabama went down to Texas A&M 41-38 on a game-winning field goal. That game was a night game. Texas A&M unranked was supposed to get smoked. And they brought their everything in there, and you could just tell there was something in the air. You, you, you never want those games, man. And Alabama lost, and Byron, that has changed some things for us because we did not have them losing this early. I definitely didn't think they would lose to an unranked Texas A&M. Like mm-hmm. before, like when we first previewed, Texas was ranked, I think, in the top 10, which yep. was a couple of weeks ago, and they lost two straight. So I was like, oh, Alabama's got this. They're clicking on all cylinders as well. Their defense looks great. Their offense looks great. And Bryce Young. But, man, Texas A&M came to play. They said, don't forget about us. Yeah, and they've, yeah, they changed things a lot because Alabama went from number one in the country to number five in the AP and the coaches. So, again, man, these night games – when a team knows this is their Super Bowl, this is their national championship, and they come with everything. And I know Michael Penix at Indiana hasn't been playing like he did last year, but, man, if, if they get a couple deep bombs early, I mean, we haven't experienced that since Oregon where a team punches us in the mouth quick. Mm-hmm. And like you already said, it's the game right before Penn State. So we have the looking ahead potentially. I really hope Ryan Day and the next, you know, this week and the week of the Indiana game really has a team focus on Indiana. We cannot look yeah. ahead because if we look ahead, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I expect us to win this game too, but this is a be careful, be very careful. Do not let Indiana get confidence. You have to shut them out early. If you let them get confidence and that deep ball starts going, because guys, our corners still aren't good. So don't let the rec- like, don't let that pick six, whatever thing that we have and that we broke our school history, the most pick six in a row. Like our defense hasn't been really, really tested since freaking Oregon. Um, Oregon. Shoot, even Tulsa. Remember, we were that's true. It, Tulsa, it was a fourth quarter game. That is very true. But, yeah, for the Indiana game, I think we're both just saying a Buckeye win, but be very careful. I did not like seeing that that was going to be at night on ABC because that was going to get that student section riled up. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Like, and like I said, Big Ten always plays their best games against us, especially like top, ten, top teams like Indiana, mm-hmm. Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State. We always have their biggest games against us. So that's what happens when you're their Super Bowl. Yeah. And then speaking of the Big Ten, man, they delivered two on this week. I'm so Iowa and Penn State. That was a game. That uh, was a game. Iowa came out on top 23-20. Byron, I do feel like if Sean Clifford didn't get hurt, Penn State would have won this game. Oh yeah. They were rolling uh, Penn State early. I mean Iowa early. After the first quarter, they were up 14-3. Mm-hmm. At the half, they're up 17-10. And then Clifford didn't come back in the second half, and I think that is what changed the game for Penn State and Iowa. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, mm-hmm. You never want to see your star quarterback go down like that. And we still don't know how long he's going to be out. He could potentially miss the OSU game. <laughs> I hope not. I want Penn State at their best. Yeah, me, me too as well. Me too as well. But that Iowa crowd, raucous. See, once, it, once those lights turned on and it was nighttime, 
that's why we say OSU Penn State needs to be a night game because once you have that under the lights, national TV, it, it, it's different in college. Yes, sir. I, I definitely think that needs to be a night game, even though Penn State lost. Um, I still think it needs to be a night game because there'd definitely be two top 10 teams going against each other. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, if Penn State wins the next couple of games. Oh, yeah. They should still be. Even Kurt Ferris said the Iowa head coach, he's like, once those lights turned on the stadium and it was night, oh, Lord. Because the game started at four, a couple hours in. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere changed. And you saw that crowd and the backup quarterback for Penn State, they couldn't hear. That's that's home field advantage. You saw them storming the field because you're like, we just beat the number four team in the nation. We're going to potentially be. And this is even before we knew Alabama was going to we potentially be the number two team in the country. Yes. And here they are, the number two team in the country. Uh, yes. Yeah. Georgia, Iowa, top two t- teams. That's wild. And then going on to another game that we said this was trappy, Michigan and Nebraska, and Nebraska had them. They had them. <laughs> Man, Nebraska is showing me some things this year. They're showing hard. They just can't close. That's the only thing that just can't close. Like, man, they had Michigan on the ropes and just ah, couldn't do it. So Michigan, I don't know how they're surviving. They survived against Rutgers. They survived against Nebraska. They're the number nine team in the country, too. Another old Miss in Arkansas, the two teams who both lost last week. Byron, that game was wild, too, man. 52-51. I was not expecting it to be a high score like that. No, 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 no. I mean, Arkansas had a chance. They could have kicked the extra point. They went for two. They wanted to go for the win, and they didn't get in. They lost. I don't understand. I was having a problem with that. Like, if you don't need to go for two, don't. Mm-hmm. Just kick the extra point, go in overtime, survive. For another chance to win. Don't I, I, mm. I know you're not a big fan, of it, but hey, that's what they had to deal with. So with that switch, another huge, I mean, the other game that we, Red River rivalry, Oklahoma, Texas. Texas was a boat racing them. A majority of the game, Spencer Rattler, who people remember, was the preseason Heisman favorite, the preseason number one draft pick for 2022. He gets benched, and then Oklahoma comes alive. And, Byron, that game was wild as well. It was. I was – I picked Texas to win. You did. You Um, were were almost a prophet. They were smoking them. They were smoking them, but that backup quarterback for Oklahoma, Cho Hart, gave Oklahoma – you know, got Oklahoma back in the game. They ended up winning 55-48. to Caleb Williams. Yep. Caleb Williams, man, and he, Texas and Oklahoma start throwing deep balls at the end of the fourth quarter to get those touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Like Oklahoma scored 25 points in the fourth quarter. That's insane. (laughs) Like Texas, where was your defense at? They, they, they passed out, man. I mean, the first quarter, Texas was up 28 to seven. Once, once Spencer, Spencer Rattler got benched in, I mean, Lincoln Riley can't go back to Spencer, man. You 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 gotta you gotta sit him. You gotta have Caleb finish it out. Like I know Keynes is gonna be mad because they have an endorsement. Which, but like, now nah, Spencer has been playing good all year to the standard that they that the college football people made us think he could play. I mean, they he was a Heisman favorite. I mean, yeah. he's had mm-hmm. over thirteen hundred yards, ten touchdowns. I'm trying to see if he's had any picks this year. Oh, he's had picks. Oh, yeah. He has thrown five interceptions. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about Oklahoma, man, how they're, they're either really, really bad or they're the team of destiny because this is another game where they survived. They have survived every game this year but one that they just blew the team out. Yep. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, I, you got to sit up and Spencer. How are you going to tell your team, like, hey, Spencer was playing so bad against Texas, we put Williams in, but we're going to go back to Spencer. And, like, you're going to cause the – you got to sit him, man. You got to. I I think you have to sit him at this point. And Spencer's probably going to go to the transfer portal. I mean, 
I, I don't know how he'll be the number one pick this year now. I think that's dead. Yeah, because Texas, I mean, Texas is, was Texas ranked? Yeah, Texas is 21. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Texas is always that team, either really good or <laughs> really bad. <laughs> um, so, you know, being the number four team in the country, you don't want to have a comeback one against Texas like that. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it does show that you can come back from being down and win. I think you just have to stick with the high hands and Caleb Williams as well. Agreed. Agreed on that. Uh, Notre Dame had a close game. I mean, they were coming off that loss to Cincinnati. They won 32-29. They're also in always close games as well. I think the two biggest surprises right now in college football, Byron, one from the SEC and one from the Big Ten, I put them 1A, 1B as biggest surprises, Kentucky and Michigan State. Uh, no one expected them preseason to be as good as they are. And if you've watched Michigan State, they're a problem. Kentucky's they're a problem as well. And right now in the newest polls, they're right behind each other. Michigan State's 10 and Kentucky's um 11. And if Michigan State stays in the top 10 and makes, again, we already said that game was going to be very interesting on the 30th. But the Michigan-Michigan State game, again, is on October 30th. So that makes that a very interesting if they both are undefeated until then i would like them to both to be undefeated because uh, again that makes a big 10 look amazing when they go head to head again like that well uh michigan plays uh northwestern this week so they should no is that a buy or let me make sure because i just saw they oh yeah they have a buy they don't play northwestern until the 23rd so they're going to get some. Is everyone on a buy this week? Like, geez. Oh, and Michigan State plays at Indiana this week. And then the week after, they get a buy. And then they play Michigan on the 30th. Man, Indiana has two tough games back to back. That is rough. Uh, yeah, their schedules. I mean, I'm looking at Michigan State's schedule. They end with at OSU and then first Penn State. Hmm. But, I mean, yeah, so those teams are crazy. Come, Like, no one expects them to be as good. And the new rankings now that you already said, Georgia's the new number one team. Iowa's two. Cincinnati currently is number three. Oklahoma is four. Alabama is five. OSU, six. Penn State, seven. Michigan, eight. Oregon, nine. Michigan State, ten. And we did talk about Kentucky. They are right at 11. Byron, we have five Big Ten teams. In the top 10. And four of those five Big Ten teams are in the Big Ten East. I think I'm getting close to saying that the Big Ten East currently is the best division in college football. Oh, for sure. I mean, it I used to be an SEC East that would always dominate the rankings. But the Big Ten East, man, we are looking amazing. I think it was the SEC West because they had Alabama, LSU. Yeah, West, East had, yeah, East had Georgia and Florida, and that's really it. But Byron, man... I, <laughs> With these rankings, and now that we've confirmed that the college football playoff rankings will be in November, is that oh they're going to be the are they the week right after the thirtieth? If week nine is the thirtieth, then yes, because this week is week seven. Yeah, week nine is the th- yeah. Week- I think is it? Yep, I think it's right after the thirtieth. Oh, so they've been listening to the L Seven C podcast in the big weeks out of the way. All right. All right. Um, but I really don't think there's there is one surprisingly big game now this week, and it's number one Georgia versus number eleven Kentucky. This is gonna prove we're gonna see how good Kentucky really is. Yeah, that's that's the biggest game of the week. Ooh, I'm gonna have to watch that. That not was not paying attention. Yeah, because no one expected Kentucky to be this good. They're undefeated. Sure, people say who have they played, but this is their prove it moment. If they can hang with Georgia, and Lord help us if they do the unthinkable. Well, I mean, they just beat a ranked 10 at Florida two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But if they can get past that Georgia defense, which is powerful, then uh, it's going to yeah. be 
And Georgia has shut out two opponents this year. Like, they shut out Arkansas, and they were ranked number eight. Mm-hmm. So their defense is legit. They only let Auburn, number 18, score 10 points. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I know. It's wild. So, Byron, man, you know how we end them. Um, we talk about college football playoff-type rankings. Byron, what are you seeing right now? I know me personally, I hate when Alabama loses early. Because then everyone uses the, oh, Alabama lost early. It was on the road. It was that night, which is all valid. But, you know, if that's used with OSU, it doesn't work. So, right. I I need Georgia to be Alabama. So just enjoy in the SEC championship game? Yes. Because I okay. don't think that'd well, be one. Oh, yo, Alabama will not get in. That'd be only one SEC team. Yes. I think mm-hmm. everyone needs that. The Big 10, Big 12. Cincinnati. I would say Cincinnati. I would say the ACC, but you know they're done. Pac twelve. Pac twelve. Yep. Yeah, Alabama needs to lose in that championship because I, again, I don't see them losing. Mm-hmm. But you, again, you never know any given Saturday. Um, they're uh, like they're, I guess, toughest games. Maybe LSU and Auburn. Well, they play Arkansas the week before Auburn, so. We'll see. Ooh, Auburn's a rivalry game, and polls love Auburn for some reason. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Georgia, which I mean, to people who don't know, I despise Georgia just because they always, they always get to, they never close. Out of all my years of watching them since 2008, when they had Matt Stafford, AJ Green, No Sean Marino, all three of them were on the cover of the freaking um, Sports Illustrated. I think Marino was on the cover of they were on the cover of some game stuff too. They never closed, never with Mark Ritt. They were always like 10 and 2 and would lose. Mm-hmm. I know and they would lose a game they're not supposed to would never win the big one with Kirby Smart. They'd always lose that one. I think last year they lost like South Carolina. They would lose that random game or they'd make it far. I mean, they made it to the championship game. Then they, they have it in the bag when Jalen Hurts is in. Then here comes freshman Tua, and they lose in overtime. Like, stuff like that, man. They just never close. So, this year might be the year because their defense is looking crazy. So, Byron, if your situation happens, Georgia would be undefeated. They'd go into one seed. I'm, since we're a Buckeye pod, we're assuming the Buckeyes win out. I don't know if we'd be a two seed or three. It depends, you know, because, you know, they make the matchups too. All right. Yeah, if if Clemson was good, we'd be playing Clemson again. Um, so that put us in. I mean, if Cincinnati goes undefeated as of right now, I think they would be in. You would have to. You have to put Cincinnati in. If they went out, you have to put Cincinnati in. Oh yeah, and then there's Oklahoma if they went out. That's um, that'd be four right there. Now. The problem is, if Oklahoma loses and Oregon wins out, who do you go with? I mean, Oregon would have the best win. They'd have the best win against Ohio State, but they might have the worst loss, depending on who Oklahoma loses to. That's true. Like, I think Oklahoma's biggest game left would be Oklahoma State at the end of the season. And the so Big 12 last, championship. Well, yeah, the Big 12 championship. Let me let me throw this out to you because uh, shout out he did uh, shout out to uh, Pat Rick. He did bring this up. Could Big Ten? Could the Big Ten get two in? Potentially, if I yeah. was only lost is to Ohio State by a game winning touchdown, and it was maybe it was on a fluky call too. Maybe it was a bad ref call. And that's Penn State's only loss. Could Penn State, could we potentially get two Big Ten teams in then? If, well, Iowa, I like assume is making the Big Ten championship game. Oh, yeah, they have to now. They have, they, sh- they should, well, if they mess it up, God help us, but they should be pretty, if they take care of business, they would lose only one game to Ohio State. And then let's say Oklahoma, loses a game and then Oregon still has one loss, but what if they lose again? But yeah. Man, I mm, 
I feel like that number four spot is going to be up for debate like it always is this year. Well, if they host Cincinnati, the number three spot is going to be up for debate too. That's true. Three and four. Like if Georgia and Iowa went out, they should be number one and two respectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but if chaos happens and somehow it will. Iowa, it will. that's true, it will because you know it's college football. Mm-hmm. Um, man, if I Ohio State beats a number two Iowa in the Big Ten championship by a touchdown, and that's their only loss, I think you would have to put Iowa in like they do with Alabama when they only lose a SEC championship. Like you set that precedent that oh. If you only lose the SEC championship game, you know, you should be in the college football playoffs. Now, it probably won't happen because, you know, SEC bias and all that. But I think in this situation, Iowa should still deserve to be in the college football playoffs. Before we, who are you kicking out? Before we sign out, who are you kicking out then? <sighs> Oklahoma. Okay. Okay. And Oregon's tricky. Oregon shot themselves in the foot. If they didn't lose this game, we would be having the debates we had two weeks ago. If we would still get in. Right. Oregon definitely did not. I didn't see them losing to Stanford. That changed everything. That was terrible. They messed up. But just think about Ohio State right now. We're sitting at number six. If we, if we all play these games right now, we played the number seven team in the Two weeks, two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that, on the 30th. Mm-hmm. Then we also, right now, would play the number 10 team, Michigan State. Mm-hmm. The number eight team, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then if it stays true, the number two team, Iowa. Those are all big wins. Like, I mean, I think whoever now, whoever wins the Big Ten is going to get in. Yes, they're, they're going to get in. Now it's just a matter of if one of the people, if that's their only loss. I mean, it can't. We've already lost to Oregon, but if like Michigan got into the Big Ten championship and lost to Iowa, that'd be their only loss. Like, would mm-hmm. they get in or like a Michigan State? But now it's like because we have seen conferences get two in. Well, not conferences, conference get to yes. SEC. It was Georgia and Alabama. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, why did Alabama get in? I think that was a year that we should have got in, or was it Penn State? No, that was no 2016 is the year Penn State should have got in over us because they won the Big yeah. Ten Champion, but we only but we beat Oklahoma at Oklahoma and Penn State was our only loss. So they're yeah. like, y'all are better. And I guess Penn State had two losses. Alabama, the one that because we had Dwayne when it happened, was because Alabama wasn't even in the SEC championship game. That's what it was. And they got it. Yeah. I man, SEC bias. I know people like to say that's not true. But people, for some reason, everyone loves Alabama. I mean, they prove them right, man. I don't know about this year. I did joke that Nick Saban is probably happy they lost because now he can really chew his team because he always loves to tell his team, stop listening to the media. We're not that good. And then when they lose, they're like, see, I told you. <laughs> you know his players got chewed out after oh, that game. It's, it's bad. I feel bad for whoever they play next. Byron, man, anything else happening uh, for the Buckeye one? I don't think we're actually going to have one next week because next week, this Saturday is a bye Unless if Georgia loses, then we need to do an emergency one. But I think we're, yeah, I think we won't be back till after the Indiana game. Yeah. Uh, well, say week seven. If something crazy happens, you will definitely hear from us. Oh, yeah. Just Georgia losing. Georgia losing would cause us to come back. We, yeah. Because that would F some things up real bad. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a probably only biggest game. I mean, Michigan State and Indiana, Oklahoma State, Texas. Actually, that might be a good game because Oklahoma State's 12 and Texas is 25. Florida LSU might be a good game. 
Yeah, nothing of Georgia and Arkansas. I mean, Georgia and Kentucky is the only thing that could have met, like, mess up stuff at the top. That's one versus 11. That's true. Yep. But shoot. With that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the OSU uh, Buckeye review and preview in our college football podcast here on the L7C. Make sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe. By the time you're listening to this, we're still on the road to 2,000 listens. Currently, we are still 19 away. So hopefully by the time you listen to this, we're getting closer and closer. We have a lot of content coming out in these next couple of weeks. So help the L7C get to 2K. And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.